This week on Africa Weekly, we meet the Nigerian entrepreneur who's also king of the Fulani people. And then we take a look at Nigeria's music scene and the pop star challenging conventions. But first, let's take a look at the stories making the headlines this week. A court in Nairobi has sentenced three men to prison terms ranging from 41 years to life for abetting the massacre of 148 people by Somali jihadists at Garissa University in northeast Kenya in 2015. A Tanzanian man was sentenced to life for his involvement in the attack, whilst two Kenyans were each given 41 years. During the attack, four Al-Shabaab gunmen stormed the student halls of residents, firing weapons at dawn on the 2nd of April 2015 before separating the victims according to their religion. Muslims were allowed to go, but the rest, who were mostly Christian, were killed. Guinea-Bissau's president, José Maria Vaz, has named a new government under mediation in a bid to end months of political turmoil. In a presidential decree, Vaz gave the lion's share of posts to members of his African party for the independence of Guinea-Bissau and Cape Verde, the party which holds the most seats in government. The reshuffle came under an initiative launched by the 16-nation Economic Community of West African States, also known as ECOWAS. Vaz's elected five-year mandate ended on the 23rd of June, but he's temporarily staying on under the mediation plan drawn up by ECOWAS. Two people were killed and over 30 vehicles burnt after thieves breached a fuel pipeline in Lagos, Nigeria's commercial hub, which caused an explosion. The incident happened in the early hours of the morning and is the latest in a long string of such accidents. The fire was caused by vandals who broke open a state-run pipeline in order to access petrol. After African Union and Ethiopian mediators invited Sudan's ruling generals and protest leaders to resume talks, the leaders managed to reach an agreement on the disputed issue of a new governing body in breakthrough talks aimed at ending the country's months-long political crisis. The power-sharing agreement came after two days of talks that resumed on Wednesday after the previous round of negotiations collapsed in May over who should lead the ruling body, a civilian or soldier. Tension between the ruling generals and protest leaders had further soared after a brutal raid on a long-standing protest camp in the capital Khartoum that killed dozens of demonstrators and wounded hundreds of people on the 3rd of June. Togo holds its first local elections in 32 years, during which a single family has ruled the West African nation, with most opposition parties taking part after boycotting 2018 parliamentary polls. The elections mark a major advance in the establishment of democracy, according to President Ford Ngassingbe in a Facebook post. Ngassingbe has been in power for nearly 15 years since succeeding his father, who had led the country with an iron fist for almost 40 years. The first Qatar Airways flight from Doha to Mogadishu landed at the Somali capital's Aden Abdullah International Airport. The landmark flight marks a growing list of foreign air travel companies who have started running flights to Somalia in recent years. I'm truly honoured to be here today to integrate our launch of our new route. We have responded to increased customer demand for service to Somalia and starting today will be flying three times a week between Mogadishu and Doha. Every month at the palace, the ritual remains the same. The king of the Fulani is dressed with a turban by his assistant. After a brief meeting with his emissaries, the council of traditional leaders begins. Most of the time, uh, the, uh, people come and bring their problems you know, to me, and we try our best to see how we're going to solve it. If it is something we can solve, we do it immediately. If it is not, we give them time to come back. Or if, it is, if it's something that has to do with the law enforcement, we talk to the law enforcement. Land disputes, family quarrels, attacks and armed robberies are all on the agenda. The king of the Fulani people in Lagos is called upon for any community-related problem. It is a community that also suffers from discrimination. 
the Fulani are regularly accused of being at the root of deadly violence between farmers and herders in central Nigeria. Anywhere you see a Fulani man, people see them as killers. But it's not true. A Fulani man is a wonderful person. He accommodates, he likes his people, he likes his, um, uh, his neighbors, he, 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 he interacts. You know, he's a very social person, a Fulani man. But you know what? There is no society that there's no bad, bad, bad ex. Mohamed Bombardo is also an influential businessman. For three generations, his family has developed a major dock workers company in the port of Lagos. Like his royal title, he inherited the family business, which he continues to grow despite coming from a minority ethnic group. Collaborate very well, we think very well. Now, yeah, there will be issues, but issues will not be trashed out on the level of where I come from. It's on the basis of that objectivity of what the issue is, not of the color. I mean, not that I'm so that. No, we don't, issues should not be seen in that light, no. The Muslim Fula Hausa community that Muhammad oversees accounts for 5 million of the 20 million people living in Lagos. <laughs>one of the biggest young names in Nigeria's burgeoning music scene. With her gold chains and bold dress sense, 26-year-old Teniola has never been scared to stand out, and she views her individualistic mentality as a key part of her success. If you don't have the mentality of success, they will cage you and tell you, no, this is how you should be. But I don't want to be like that, I want to be me. It's this authenticity along with the striking stage presence that is making her a fan favourite at music festivals like Giddy Fest, a major event in the Lagos youth culture calendar. She came out on stage, right? And that excitement of like the music they hear on, on, you know, on the radio, and it's just as good, if not better live, that's what she is. Her success in the music industry has also propelled her into becoming something of a feminist icon. With her uncompromising tomboyish style, she hopes to pave the way for other female artists, no matter how they wish to express themselves. I see a lot of label signing female artists nowadays, and they'll tell me, since it was possible with you, then it can be possible with them too. With over a million followers on Instagram, and her YouTube videos racking up tens of millions of views, Tenny the Entertainer has truly asserted her presence on the African scene. Her next goal is the international market with her sights set on one day filling London's Wembley Stadium. Thank you very much, I love you, man. Madagascar have emerged as a surprise team at this year's Africa Cup of Nations in Egypt. Ranked as slowly as 190th little over five years ago, the arrival of French coach Nicolas Dupuis has transformed the team into a cohesive unit that's making serious waves. The team held Guinea to a 2-2 draw in their debut match and they've gone from strength to strength with a 1-0 victory over Burundi followed by a famous 2-0 defeat of three-time Africa champions Nigeria. Their reward for finishing top of the group is a last 16 encounter with the Democratic Republic of Congo, a team that thrashed Madagascar 6-1 when the sides last met in 2016. That's all from us at Africa Weekly. Until next week.